Okay, thank you all. I think uh, it's time for me to kick off. <laughs> I hope you had a good discussion uh, after the keynote. I'm not sure how I can, but I would like to see if I can join the groups after my presentation. But uh, since you're all in different groups, I'm not quite sure how that can be done, but uh, we'll find out, I suppose. <laughs> so my name is uh, Maarten de Laat. Uh, I uh, used to work and still work a little bit for the Open University in the Netherlands, but I recently moved to the University of Wollongong. But most of my talk today will be about the work that we have been doing in, in our research group on network learning and I'm very happy to see that quite a few of my colleagues uh, from the Netherlands have uh, joined me in this and uh, even sitting on the front row or something. <laughs> 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 but um, in general sort of our work has mostly been about sort of facilitating and, and stimulating network learning uh, amongst teachers for their professional development. And as the title says, we have been taking very much a, a practice-based approach. So we're really interested in, in, in finding out how people are organizing and setting themselves up in social groups or social structures to learn from each other. And uh, since that's a very challenging idea, and, and, and even harder if you like to put into practice, we put a lot of our work in sort of trying to understand what it is that people do, why people want to find each other and start working together, and how we can develop tools and knowledge to facilitate that kind of structure and, and also an organizational culture that sort of helps facilitating and recognizing uh, network learning for professional development and, and that, that recognition part that sort of uh, is, is the second term there in terms of value creation. And I must thank Vivian because you gave a nice introduction to all kinds of theories and definitions involved in network learning and we use a lot of them as well, and, and through our work we also, of course, uh, innovate and, and further develop theories. But I would like to very much focus on, on the practice side of things and, and how we can actually work with teachers in schools to understand how we can actually further professional development on the ground, if you like. Another thing I would like to thank you for, Vivian, is that you took out the ICT bit in the definition <laughs> and really strongly focused on the agency of the learners and that's in my opinion what it's all about i mean like you say technology is simply there but i'm not so interested in yet another paper telling how good technology is to facilitate human interaction i think it's we who are facilitating our interaction and i would like to focus on that so connecting professionals and open landscapes of practices that is sort of the whole idea behind it and, and what we are interested in and like I already said, it is embedded in the practice, so people are finding each other and they are connecting in order to learn from each other. And like this building as well, it's a very open, creative space, but it doesn't mean that uh, collaboration and networking is happening automatically. And, and, and that's sort of the problem definition that we kind of depart from in our research. And it's a bit of a dilemma or a paradox maybe, because you could say that network learning is happening spontaneously and it's happening all the time. You know, you're if you have a bit of a question or a problem, you start talking to other people, you, you try to browse the internet to find some answers and develop learning relationships. But at the same time, if you want to use that approach for professional development within organizations, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit difficult. And especially from an organizational point of view where people are sort of used to having a, a human resource development department who will sort of plan professional development and set up courses for people to join but the relevance for that learning is not always as great. And, and we would like to see the emphasis more on uh, the daily needs. So we say that that <coughs> sort of working or teaching and learning is integrated. And, and what we mean by that is, is that while people are working, they're also innovating their practice. And through their working relationships, they're also developing their learning relationships. And, and we would very much like to see if the learning agenda within an organization can be more driven by the day-to-day -day needs of the people who are working there and, and how we can use that to also transform the organization or to become more like a learning organization as a result of that and see how we can combine, if you like, the more informal learning agenda with the more strategic agenda that, that maybe management may have and that uh, human resources often puts into, uh, into practice. So the question is, is, is how do we recognize and connect social capital in order to foster connectivity and, and, and uh, make people learn together, maybe in, in, in a more efficient way or in, in, in a bigger way or whatever. 
and in the Netherlands we're having a, a large project at the moment which is all about uh, new ways of working and in, 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 in the context of developing all these kind of professional networks and the idea of the new ways of working is, is sort of how can we break down all kinds of barriers that sort of hinder connectivity whether it's, it's silos within departments, uh, whether it's maybe uh, the lack of use of technology, because there it is. <laughs> you can have sort of business social media within your organization that really facilitates people to stay in touch with each other. And it's, it's also about sort of creating this sort of open office atmosphere where people can actually see each other working, so creating more transparency. It, it's, it's this openness that, that will then, of course, facilitate people's recognition, sort of, uh, if you walk, you, Past somebody that you see what he or she is doing, and that would be a trigger for a conversation. So even in our own department, we went from a very sort of traditional research office space where everybody had their own little box where they work in. You enter at nine o'clock, you leave at five o'clock. You've been emailing with the entire world, but you don't know what your neighbour has been doing. <laughs> and we sort of took out that, that and completely designed it into an open workspace where you actually you know you see each other and. and and that already created a lot, a lot more social interaction and a lot more bonding. And I think in this graph it sort of sums it up in a way that, that if you can, uh, from a human capital point of view, if you move from an isolated position to an integrated position, that already will push the boundary of, of, of learning and, 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 and doing things together. But also it comes that, that with the attitude that you have an open knowledge practice, that you, you are allowed and, and willing to share your ideas and the things you're working on, but also your, 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 that you also learn to become more vulnerable and that you also share the things that you find difficult. It's not only about success, but it, it, it's really trying to develop these kind of trustworthy relationships where you can actually uh, dig deeper into the things. <coughs> Thomas, would you like to check the time for me a little bit? Because I might uh, overrun, I probably will. <laughs> So focusing on that idea of connecting knowledge practices, I think, uh, ties very nicely with the notion of networking and the notion of communities. And it's, 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 it's this idea of creating this open space where people can meet each other. And the networks, I think, are an excellent way of an excellent social platform to meet your peers. Because people, it's all about having a shared interest and, and being able to find somebody else with a, with a similar interest. Is, is a huge catalyzer, if you like, in, in developing these kind of learning relationships and towards solving the problems that you have in common. And the other thing about networks is, is that they are self-governing. You know, if you have a certain question or a certain difficulty, you know, it's, it's up to you to go out there or it's up to you to, to join another network. So the supply and demand is, 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 is organized by itself. Uh, with, with schools that we work with, uh, we often also organize uh, a networking day where it's a bit like a marking place where, where teachers can actually show and tell what they are doing and uh, and that's that's been really important and uh, actually this week I've been uh, with a group of Singaporean, <laughs> Singaporean researchers we went to a, a large cluster of schools in the north of the Netherlands where it, it, and they are a cluster of schools for special needs education it's about 600 teachers who are sort of scattered across three provinces in the Netherlands and they've really adopted this whole network learning approach for facilitating these kind of, of, of uh, meetings and, and uh, when I was there there was such a marketplace happening and it was really interesting to see so they, they every network had sort of put up a little stall or whatever you know and, and showcasing the materials they've been working on and, and other teachers were just walking past and you could join workshops and things like that and it was a really nicely informal gathering where people are exchanging their knowledge but also feel that they have the uh, you know, I just was going to say the authority I'm not sure that's right, but, but, but they are really in charge of, of, of developing the knowledge within the organization and getting the recognition <coughs> for it and, and there was a real energy bus and I think being able to, to, to use the networking principles is a really good idea to drive that kind of energy where people are respected for what they know and you can actually see what people are doing and also it's, 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 it's bottom-up, it's emergently, uh, so it's, 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 it's a nice way of, of getting rid of these traditional hierarchies where, you know, if you had a, an organization day when the agenda was already laid out and you know what you have to do and it's all managed in advance and you just be informed rather than sort of that you can actually uh, uh, make the agenda of the day. So again, networks are about something. They make knowledge flow through their conversations. It's a great way of sharing expertise and, and your knowledge. 
and it's also an easy access to, to a variety of resources because the idea as well for networks is, is of course that it, it's, it's interdisciplinary, you know, you, you try to look at issues from a, I think that's where the heterotopia might come in, but it, 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 it's at least trying to find that richness within the, in the, uh, in the interactions rather than just putting people together who, who, who think similarly about everything. But it's not all <laughs> very easy, of course. It's not just one party, in, uh, especially from within organizations and from a managerial point of view, it, the people get very nervous because how do we know people are doing the right things or how do we know that people are developing themselves in a way that, that is in support of the organization rather than that they just develop in, in such a way that they might be on the way out or that they start sharing sort of the secrets of the organization, especially in commercial industry. That's, that's always a question you get a lot. So, and because the networks are in charge themselves, it's, 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 it's evident, of course, that networks come and go. They are in existence as long as it's useful or meaningful to themselves. It's also personal in a way that, that you join the networks that you think you can learn from and that you can also start the, the networks that you want to learn from. Networks are invisible and informal, like I said already, but the, the invisibility issue is, is quite a, a one that I would like to talk more about uh, later on. But also, and I think that's why it's so interesting to have more practice-based research. There is not one solution that will help you to, to set up successful networks. So it's not like a, a predetermined roadmap, if you like, that sort of say, you know, step one, step two. So it, it, it's, it's a way of discovery. and. and you can put a lot of principles in place, but the, the way a network adopts it is, is, is up to themselves. And this is why I think it's important to, to be really sort of in tune with what practice wants and what practice needs. So this is the, the, our idea of, of conducting practice-based research. It's, it's where we, as, as uh, researchers from, uh, well, in this case, the Old University, really develop collaborative relationships with the schools who are interested in developing network learning and really try to identify the agenda together, sort of highlight the issues that, that, that they bring to the table. First of all, you know, why do you want to make more of network learning? Why do you think informal learning is, uh, is important? So you really want to try and understand the common understanding of the problem, as well as a similar understanding of, of the kind of approach that you're seeking. Because we've had meetings where you can talk happily about network learning, but you still have a complete different understanding of, of, of how to implement it. So we would come in with the sort of all these notions of emergence and spontaneity, where they would still think, no, no, it's everybody has to join at least five networks. These are the topics. Sign up. So it, you can you can talk about the same words, but the way you feel about it is still completely different. So it's really important to set that sort of common ground and common understanding. And in us, uh, in our problems, we think it, it, it's interesting to, to focus in on, on these, what we call these wicked problems. So it, it, it's really something also where the organization wants to, to dig in deep and, and try to understand how we can actually make this happen. So you really can set up a sort of a collaborative learning network yourself as well, where you can then have a sort of interdisciplinary understanding and, and, and look at it from, from different kind of ways and try to identify certain steps along the way. So in our research, it, it is kind of demand-driven. So the organizations come to us with this idea that we want to do more about it, and we try to identify how we can help each other and how we can develop a kind of uh, a change agenda for practice, but also a learning and a knowledge agenda for ourselves. And, and that is a real interaction in terms of learning from each other's solutions. And we go through a, 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 a kind of a three-phased process, if you like. So it, it's very important to have that sort of phase of diagnosis to really get to know each other, understand the position and what you try to do. And then from that, you, you will set up a kind of a design team, which is the second uh, very important principle, which consists of a few researchers, a few teachers, a few managers, sort of, if you like, all layers from within the organization, because every aspect of the organization will be touched by it. It's not just a project that you do for a couple of years and you say, okay, teachers, it's important that you start learning in networks and we just make some space for it, it's really a change of attitude. It will also lead to a change of, of leadership because if, if, if networks take the charge for developing knowledge of certain key areas in the organization, they will also then start telling leadership uh, how, it, how it will be done, you know, what they have learned and things like that. So it's really the idea of distributed leadership, for example, to, to give those networks enough space and credibility to really 
in a, in a professional kind of way, develop <coughs> and take charge of the learning agenda of that particular topic within the organization. And, and being able to recognize that and let go from your more coordinative sort of position is, is really challenging and, and find most uh, managers find that really difficult because they're quite used to sort of work from this fashion of predicting what, what needs to be done and solving the gaps. <laughs> So it, 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 it leads to very interesting discussions and, and at the moment we're just having a project where we actually try to zoom in on sort of, okay, well how does leadership change as a result of network learning? So we have been working with networks in the schools and now we really try to challenge the leaders within those schools sort of, okay, well how do you see the school from a networking point of view? What does it mean for you? How do you let go certain things or, or where do you need to put more energy and, and how do you provide support and motivate networks and, and things like that. So in the second phase, it, it is, is working with that team that sort of represents all, all layers or all levels within the organization to really act as a thinking group, sort of, okay, what can we do? What, what, what sort of changes do we need to put into place? And then we can experiment with that in practice and, and, and that design team can then use the, the outcomes of the, the experimentations to really think about, okay, what does this mean if you would want to implement that sort of throughout the entire organization, what needs to be done, or how can we support it. So it's really setting up a group that is yeah, co-constructing, if you like, sort of the, the knowledge within practice that sort of will say, this is how network learning will fit within our organization, this is what we need to do, and this is how we can support it. And Dan Andriessen, who's a researcher in the Netherlands, he developed a practice-based research model. I'm not quite sure if you can actually read it, it was not a very good <laughs> picture to start with. But he, he, he has two streams basically, he, he sort of says you have the generic knowledge stream and you have the local problems and I think that's a very important aspect of our work, sort of we start with identified local problems within organizations, we really try to, to, to discover and, and talk through with, with the schools what it is that they're facing, how that, how that works and then through that process we try to identify research questions that can then sort of set up in a, in a kind of interaction between more sort of theory driven and practice driven activities in order to try and solve certain issues, certain problems. So this is, uh, <laughs> it's a very nice space but I'm sure it has lots of challenges too and, 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 and one of the questions that I always ask some of this is what are the networking possibilities of such a space, you know, what, what are the opportunities that that building provides in order to start networking and, and, and I think one of the challenges, and you have that in this room as well, is, is you're gathering sort of with a, there as well of course, but you have quite a large group of people together but you don't really know what sort of uh, knowledge you bring to the group, so that the kind of social capital that's sort of represented in this entire social structure is still unknown to us. Ten minutes? Okay. So it, it, it's, we're here now for one topic, but I think there is many, many connections we can build amongst each other in, in, in order to start learning from each other. And this is one of the things uh, we in our research program are focusing on, sort of how can we make more explicit sort of the ideas and the questions and, and the expertise that everybody has, and how can we actually utilize that and, and, and uh, start developing a specific networks. So, Step one, if you like, is more sort of, okay, what are we about? Who are we? What, what, what do we bring to the table, if you like? And then in, in the second step, it's a sort of trying to identify ways in which we can see how we can become or how we are connected and how we can develop sort of learning friendships or learning relationships based on that recognition. And then after that, you can start to think, okay, well, how can we as a network or as a community, how can we actually start learning in a successful way? What do we need and what does the, the organization also need to provide in order to facilitate that learning and to make it more sustainable, if you like. And for us in our research program, it's all about sort of, okay, focus on awareness, sort of get to know each other, make sure that participation is possible, but also try to, to identify and help ways in which we can uh, sort of uh, increase the, the ability to become network learners and also the ability for networks to, to learn because those are two separate things in my opinion. And also think about sort of uh, the value that we are creating, what, what, what are the outcomes if you like of these network learning activities and is that being appreciated amongst ourselves but also within the, in the organization. So, so does again the organizational culture support 
knowledge creation within these networks and, and, and does that in a way also become a way of st strengthening network learning relationships. So in the awareness situation, what we're trying to do is, is to really try and make that sort of spontaneous, hidden, informal learning, what I said in the beginning, to see if we can make that more visible in such a way that it will also be more talked about. Again, in, in, in the projects where we come uh, in, in the beginning phase as well, is, is that if you talk to, to directors, they often are quite negative about the fact that teachers are not knowledge workers because they feel like they're not really passionate or they're not really doing it. It's quite a negative tone. And then I always think, like, but, but people are just talking about the work. It's a natural thing. But I, I don't think that, that you will see it. And this is sort of how we came to this idea that maybe we can use social network analysis to actually try and identify sort of the daily conversations that teachers have about sort of their work-related problems and their work-related issues. And that becomes a real eye-opener for not only within the organization, but also thinking about how can we actually lead and coordinate maybe this more emergent, bottom-up learning. So what we have done is, is uh, we, we have developed a tool that can help us identifying the, the well, this probably doesn't work. Uh, does it work? No, it doesn't. <laughs> so you got the, the, the column on the right, the, the gray column, that, that is a really, if you like, a tag cloud of all the problems and challenges that teachers have identified through conversations that we've had during the project. So these are their day-to-day -day learning issues. And then as a, as a second step, we've asked them sort of, okay, well, with whom are you actually talking about these issues? With whom are you learning around these issues? So to really identify the, the, the real sort of learning relationships that people have developed within the organization. And we've put that in this, in this tool, and it, it, it becomes then a, 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 a create, well, not a create, but a, a dynamic tool that you can search. So if you click, of one of the words in, in the topic cloud, if you like, then you will see the network structures that exist around that issue. And I can show you a small example. If, um, I can, if I, <laughs> I guess I need to. Here. This is a, a, a tool you can uh, access yourself on the internet. And then if you, if you create a public map, it's for free. So if you want to play around with it, you can, uh, you can actually do it. But the nice thing about this is, is that you can actually start adding all kinds of people. Sort of, they call it elements. I think it's a bit of a strange word for <laughs> social network analysis, but anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and the second, uh, the connections are, is then the list of topics that people have identified. And what we can do then is, is if, if you're interested sort of in network facilitation, you can see all the people within your organization that are actually talking about sort of facilitating networks. And it's a really way, a really good way to visualizing sort of the existing conversations that are there. And, and it's an eye opener within the organization that, hey, we actually have a lot of social capital uh, available in the organization. And, and it's, 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 it's spontaneously developed, if you like. And it really helps you to to get this sort of structure of the ground that there are a lot of people learning on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you would connect all of them, you can actually see that the entire organization, of course, knows each other, and, but it, it's through different types of relationships. And I think in, in buildings like this, where you have this, this huge openness, I think it might help in order to draw more attention towards what it is that people are doing. And another example, is, a, is an app that we are developing at the moment. Oh, sorry. That's, a, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, what do we do now? Is there anybody who can help with the visuals? Uh, I might just... Okay. Okay. just plug it in and plug it out. So what we are working towards <laughs> is a, oh, it's a kind of reboot. Eh? <laughs> We're trying to develop an app that, that can be used at, at a campus or at a large organization that, where people can sort of say, okay, today I'm working on this and this topic, and it uses GPS technology to pinpoint you on the location. So again, it's another way of sort of showing where you are and what you are working on. 
And within the University of Wollongong, they're starting up now a project on sort of informal learning spaces. And I think it's really exciting to sort of see uh, with this tool if you can actually start tracking down if people find it, find each other on an easier way in, in terms of developing these kind of uh, collective groups or things like that. And I think you can also start using it for your teaching because you could also say, well, on Wednesday afternoon I'll be there, you know, I'll be talking about a particular topic and you can just have sort of open workshops around certain uh, ideas. I'll need to speed up a little bit. In terms of the ability, we have, like I said, developed all kinds of tools and, and, and instruments for, to facilitate teacher network learning. And the school that I visit this week is called REN4 or REN4. And they've really adopted our instruments and, 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 and tools within their organization. And, and this is, again, a way for networks to sort of showcase what they are about and, 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 and get more traction during the networking day or, or making sure that they can uh, add more people you know, on certain days. So the, the, the pizza aggression, it's, uh, it's, talk, it's a talking network about sort of how do we deal with aggression in the classrooms. And instead of uh, meeting at school, they were saying, okay, we just go to an Italian restaurant, you know, meet us there and we have a chat about it. And that was really successful. The school really noticed that if you give people some space and room, each network had about 600 euros each year to organize and set up their own kinds of uh, ways of doing. But also they have this sort of shared network. It's an intranet where they can showcase what the network is about. And they've really embedded also our instruments in there. So we have a, a barometer where they can sort of measure or uh, analyze sort of the well-being of their network. It, it sort of asks a few questions about sort of are we doing the right things, are we talking with the right people, is it useful for practice that we are developing, all these kind of reflections help the network to, to think through, okay, do we need to change our learning agenda or are we on the right track? And that relates to the final point and that's the appreciation in terms of value creation. It's Good enough, perhaps, of course, to have lots of people starting to learn and work together, but it's also nice if they find a better way to articulate what it is that they're working on. And this value creation framework is, is, is an attempt for networks to, 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 to share uh, more in, in, in an informed kind of way what it is that they're doing, but also to help them to plan sort of their roadmap that lies ahead of them. So the idea is, is that you have, uh, on this side, you have sort of the ground narrative, is sort of the day-to-day -day activities, the day-to-day -day stories, that, that, that are being told within these networks, but you also focus sort of on your aspirational narrative in terms of where do we want to go, what, what are our learning goals, what is our agenda in terms of why am I here basically, what do I hope to learn from each other, and we use sort of these, these value creation cycles in the middle as a way to, to reflect on actually are we making progress or are we happy with what we are doing in terms of creating or realizing our aspirations. And these cycles really help people to, to, to be a little bit more positive about what it is that they are doing. Because sometimes these networks can be very negative in terms of uh, I'm not going fast enough, I'm not doing enough, or it's, it's not resulting in, in what I expected. But in these terms of these cycles, it, 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 it comes a little bit more transparent, sort of the kind of value or the kind of outcomes that it is that you are creating. So it could be already be sort of an immediate value. So if it, it, being part of this network gives me a lot of energy, it gives me a lot of satisfaction, it's actually a great place to be, there's a lot of recognition. Well, that's value in its own right, you know, that's, that is good enough, I'm nearly there, Thomas. <laughs> and <laughs> But you can also go from, from, from the immediate value more towards potential value because of getting all these contexts, you also have access to a lot more information, a lot more knowledge. So again, you know, being part of a network has a lot of potential. And that is, again, a, a very important recognition of, 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 of a networking result, if you like. And, and finding ways to articulate that really helps not only to, and then, uh, to, to have that recognition within peers within your network so you can really talk with each other so okay what, are we, what is it that we're doing you can make be more explicit about the results that you have but also it will help you to have a stronger story to tell to, to management to to really articulate why you think your network is valuable and what it is that, that, that uh, or how the network contributed to changing your practice so now this is the last slide <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy because otherwise I would not be here. <laughs> um, throughout all these instruments that we are developing, we're kind of working towards a, a, a larger model that will sort of guide why we are doing what we are doing. And it, it's sort of creating this notion of going from awareness to engagement. So 
within these open spaces, <laughs> I'm being pushed out here. <laughs> It's, it's sort of, it, it helps participation if you know sort of what people are talking about and if you know what people's interests are. So in the top bit, it's sort of detecting each other's topics where we have sort of these awareness visualization tools. But it's also about showing that you are there and that you show up in those network meetings, but also, you know, bringing in other people, so this boundary crossing kind of thing. And then you can gradually evolve to sort of more network or solid communities and you can actually start working towards that value creation. And that's also a way from going to inform each other about sort of what you think is interesting towards the more collective uh, knowledge building or knowledge creation exercise. So this is kind of how we would like to round things up in our model. Okay.